So on the line now, um, a real living legend. Can we welcome, please, to the programme, Frank Carson. Hello, Frank. Hello, Ian. How lovely to speak to you. Go on. Uh, Frank Carson, what a, what a career, and it's still going strong. Yes, indeed. Uh, of course, a lot of, a lot of your, uh, the audience won't realise that uh, I'm 83 because of the fact I make my own face cream. Do you? <laughs> yes, indeed. And I have the wrinkle in my face, and I look around about the 50-odd mark. Got all my own hair. Uh, I've got a, it's, it's a nice colour of uh, whitey grey. You're doing better than old Brucey, then. I've just had a new knee done. Have you? Yes, indeed. I call it pneumonia. OK, let's get these... G keep the gags rolling. Now, yes, listen. indeed, and uh, yes, and I've got a pacemaker in. Have you? Which doesn't work very well, because every time I fart, the garage door opens. <laughs> can we... And I, cle can and I cleaned that one up. Yes, I bet you did. <laughs> I bet you did. Now, take me... Sorry about that, Ian. Take me back... Let's go back. Let's go back to the uh, middle fifties. Well, well, you, you can mean, tell us 50, what I've been fifty-seven years at this game now. Uh, Fifty-eight coming Christmas. Really? And I had I had a lovely offer yesterday. Believe it or not, uh, going going back nearly fifty. Well, forty-four years ago, uh, I actually toured three days in Ireland with Mario Lanza, one of the all-time greats. Wow! And yesterday, a friend brought me a record. Now, you won't be able to get this one, well, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And it's Ness and Dorma mm -hmm. sang by the very first time an act of fight that a lump in my throat because I sat with my mother and father. I was only nine year old when this, this uh, singer came on called Alessandro Valente singing Ness and Dorma. And I'd never heard it before. And I fell in love with it then. And I was so annoyed when Pavarotti done it. And it meant that everybody else in the world was going to share that with me. And I didn't like it. Frank Carson, use at 10. <laughs> right. Now, in the 50s, mm. I happen to know that you spent uh, some years with the Parachute Regiment. And that was in, the, uh, believe it or not, that was the 40s. In the 40s? Yes, I'm 83. I, I joined the Parachute Regiment uh, around the end of the in uh, 1945. And I came out again in 1948. Wow. So I'd, uh, I'd already done uh, 23 jumps with the parachute regiment and uh, finished up a lance corporal. Well, okay. I could have been a general, but to be quite honest, I just didn't have the time to go around all these troops. <laughs> a Listen, wonderful bunch of lads. You, you, you are also a plasterer. Uh, I'm a plasterer by trade as well. Yes, do all the fancy decorative stuff. Electrician? An electri well, no, uh, that, of course, was a disaster. Was it? I was asked to go out and dig a hole uh, so we could lay a cable. Unfortunately, nobody told me there was a cable underneath. I put the spade through this cable and blacked out the half of Northern Ireland. I thought we were I going. Think, I thought we were going into a still gag. Looking for me. I eh? thought we were going into a gag there. No, I'm only off. They're still looking for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So three years with the parachute regiment, and you yeah. say it was the mid fifties that you made the switch right, yeah. to show business. Yes, I did. I went in. In actual fact, I was at a show one night. I'd written a script uh, for the show. And there was a fellow in there called Jack McGay from BBC Northern Ireland who loved the script and asked me, could I write six of them? Being the enthusiastic amateur, I wrote the six of them in one day and done them then on radio and was paid 10 guineas and then 10 guineas a guinea for anyone that doesn't know about money. There's 21 shillings, wow. not one pound. <laughs> so I finished up getting uh, 120 and I couldn't believe there was that much money in show business. So I took uh, doing after dinner speaking, and then uh, 57 years ago, I decided to give it up, and that was it. Okay, so uh, then... I uh, then became a full-time professional. So then um, Opportunity Knox came uh, into the frame, didn't it? Yes, indeed. Well, I, in fact, I toured with Huey Green before I actually done Opportunity Knox, and then he asked me whether I'd do it, and I said I didn't, I didn't think there was much, much good in doing it. And it, it, it then made me realise that television and radio are one of the great ways of getting through to people. I know the people listening to your programme now, uh, maybe your old friends of mine from many years back who enjoy many of the things I've done in life. And uh, will still enjoy, I hope, 
for many years to come. I'm, I'm feeling very... I mean, I've had a knee done, I've had a pacemaker, I've had a hernia, but I'm still I'm fit as a fiddle walking up and down now, no mm. problem. And, um, we, we, you know, I was going to go on and talk about the uh, the comedians, which you did sort of early 70s. There were some great, yes, that's right. great names on that show, weren't there? Wonderful, yes, and believe there's not that many left. I know, at the moment I, we, I know. I mean, when you f- think about Charlie yeah. Williams, uh, yeah. Charlie Williams uh, died a few uh, years Bernard, back. And Bernard, Manning. Bernard Manning, Mike Reed now. Mike, Big Reedy, yes. I, well, I, I'm, I'm always a guest speaker at their funerals, believe it or not. Really? With Mike Reed, uh, his, uh, I, I still remember I said, we've come to say farewell, Mike. You've filled millions of homes with glee. Singer, actor, comedian. But you were never as funny as me. <laughs> he, loved, he, he would have loved that, Mike. But listen, a lovable Jim, friend. Jim Bowen, he's still, he's still going, isn't uh, Jim, he? Jim, well, I, st- I started Jim off, actually. Did I, you? I remember, yeah, well, I saw him one night on a show, and I said to him, what are you doing tomorrow? He said, uh, nothing, why? I said, well, come down to Granada, I'll get you on the comedians. Johnny Hamp, he was a director, was a great friend of mine. And, uh, of course, um, Jim Bowen said that was the only night he ever got laughs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, there is so much. To, there's so much I want to talk to you about. I'm just gonna. Yeah. I'm just gonna play a song. Uh, then we'll come back uh, to Frank Carson on BFBS Radio.